Hogwarts Legacy is absolutely graphically stunning, immersive, and complex. There are a few mistakes I wish I had known before I started playing it that would have made my life a lot easier. So let's jump right in. Hello my fellow Aurors, this is your Aura Sly here and I'm ready to unveil more Hogwarts Legacy secrets. The first tip is to try to proceed to the main quest first before starting a log of side quests until you unlock the Room of Requirement. This should happen within your first 10 hours of gameplay after you receive the letter from Professor Weasley asking you to urgently head over to the Astronomy Tower to meet her. There, you'll meet her friend and house elf, Deke, and they'll unlock the Room of Requirement for you. I say this because Everything in this game is super expensive. It is very hard to earn money in the game, especially early on, and all of the plants, potions, and brooms are very expensive. The Room of Requirement will allow you to plot your own plants and brew your own potions after you purchase seeds from the Magic Neep and Dogweed Cap or your potion items from Pippin Potions in Hogsmeade. I highly recommend you do this instead of spending countless hours trying to harvest these from the world, because there aren't a lot of them out there. Being evil in this game will get you farther. You heard me right. If you focus on being evil with your answers, especially while collecting your reward from completed missions, you will end up earning more than what was previously advertised. The best thing is that this choice won't even alter your game progression, but it is very likely that you're gonna get a very hot and spicy answer from the NPC. For example, in Jay Pippin's side quest, for instance, where you will need to bring some invisibility potions to another vendor, he will reward you with 300 galleons after you completed the quest. But that's if you're a nice witch or wizard. However, if you press for more, he'll end up giving you 500 galleons. I say this because money doesn't really come easy in the game. But you know, play however you want it. Whatever you deem to be fun and just have a blast. I just always want my niece. When you start exploring the castle, you will notice many of these doors. These challenges have made many scratch their heads in confusion, but its solution is relatively easy. Here, we see a problem depicted on the door and adjacent to it, we also see these sigils. Turns out, it's just a simple math problem. The number in the middle represents the total result and each piece represents a number. All you have to do is add up the beast number and find the missing number that results in a big middle number. But first, you must find the note that depicts what number each beast represents. To find this note, you need to head over to the library section of the castle right at the central hall flu powder access point. As you overlook the beast statue and the dragon mural, you can turn around and go up these stairs. Once at the top, hang a left one level and then turn right up this spiraling staircase one level up to the astronomy class flu powder access point. Once you enter this room with the wooden floors, turn left and continue straight until you reach this middle section. Proceed over to the right until you find this notice board and on the right of it, you can see a chest that will unlock the note. Now that you know what the items are, it's just a matter of easy additions to complete these challenges. These challenges will give you access to a lot of very useful loot, so make sure not to skip them. The game's tutorial doesn't really explain the crucial difference between gears and appearances in the game, and it has caused much confusion. These are two similar tools, but they yield very different results. Gears are the clothing items that you collect by fighting chests, completing missions, and buying from the shops in Hogsmeade. Once you wear a piece of gear, it'll either boost or debuff your attributes like defense and offense. Now, once you hover the cursor over a piece of gear, you can hit square on the PlayStation in order to unlock the appearance tab. It is here you will see your pre-ordered items like the Dark Arts Garrison clothing and the Special House robes. By selecting these items, you will change your look. That's it. That's all it does. Appearance doesn't change your attributes, it simply changes how a piece of gear looks for cosmetic purposes only. So, if you want to have this powerful item, but don't like the way it looks, you can simply hover over this item, hit square, then change its appearance. I love this addition because it allows you to wear all of your most powerful gears while still looking however you want to look. 
I also wish I had played a lot more attention to the challenges tab on the field guide page menu. Now I gotta say I really do enjoy the system Avalanche put in place here because it's not only story centric and immersive, it makes sense and it awards the players appropriately. So every single puzzle you solve, every single enemy you defeat, every single side quest you complete, even broom flying challenges will award you with boosts such as extra cosmetics, stronger gears, new brooms, larger gear inventory space and ancient magic ultimatums. While you're exploring Hogwarts and beyond, you will meet many students who will give you access to side quests. A lot of them are fetch quests, some will give you access to new areas in the game and others even spells and gears. Although I've always disliked fetch quests, these quests actually proved to be a lot of fun, engaging and immersive which added a lot of immersion and flavor to the main quest. However, there are a lot of side quests in this game, so in order to reduce possible side quest burnout, I'd recommend you pace yourself completing up to 3 side quests or so between the main mission quests. Also note that each side quest has an associated level recommended attached to it. You know, for those of you who want to explore the game early and end up in a massive spider den or in some massive bandit camp with trolls and the like. Revelio everything. This quick access spell can be cast by just hitting the left d-pad and it not only unveil field guide pages secretly hidden around the world, it'll also reveal hidden loot, secret doors and passages, hidden enemies, harvestable plants in the world, locks, etc. You get the drift. Every time you access a new area, I highly recommend that you spam Revalio because you never know what's going to be lurking around the corner. Now, it is important that you understand how important gear inventory management is in the game. While the Merlin Trials will allow you to increase your inventory space and size early in the game, you will face yourself with very, very limited space. This became a clear problem within the first five hours of the game when I encountered my first beautifully adorned and ornate chest. After opening it, a message popped up saying inventory is full. Now, you cannot just drop items in Hogwarts Legacy. You can only destroy them by holding down R3. After doing this, I returned back to the chest to collect my gear and guess what? It was unavailable. It's a bug that I hope they'll fix, but until then, I highly recommend that you keep tabs on what you have and every now and then make a trip to Hogsmeade to sell unnecessary items to get money and empty your inventory. The ninth mistaken tip is that you can actually change time in Hogwarts Legacy. If you want to explore the Forbidden Forest at night, for example, but it's still daytime, all you have to do is access your map Press down R3 and a prompt will appear asking if you want to change from day to night or vice versa. Then you hit the button and revalue. You've traveled in time. The last mistake and tip that I have is within your first 15 hours of gameplay, you will unlock the talents in the game. Talents are like skills and are extremely important in Hogwarts Legacy. These talents are limited and once chosen, you cannot revert back your decision. You are stuck with it for better or for worse. So make sure you pay close attention to what you are unlocking and choosing. Now, if you want to try out to see if you like your decision, just save the game before acquiring the talent and try it out. If you like it, great, continue doing your thing. But if you don't, this will give you the ability to go back and choose something else. Here we are my fellow Aurors, 10 mistakes I made early on when I played the game so you don't have to. This can also be seen as 10 tips and tricks that you can use to maximize your potential in the game. More content this way comes my fellow Aurors, but until then, mischief managed.